useful exercise. You know, um, a lot of people in the network is that they often find that they're the only person in their um, university who's, who's studying uh, OER or is even in vaguely interested in OER, even their, their supervisors aren't necessarily. And so it's a good way to kind of just come in and share stuff. Uh, but I, I don't recall those sessions like I should have been recording this one from the start. So they're kind of you know, um, open sessions to just chat and see what you want. And on July the 1st, uh, Joanna Falk will be talking, uh, who's just completed her PhD as well. So those are the, the next dates lined up. Um, so I thought I'd just open up um, here for a kind of a, a point where you can feedback if you want on this before we go on to the reports. Um, so I would wonder if people had any thoughts about um, things like the mini seminar. So ways of us reaching more people for not much money because, uh, you know, most of the money goes on that seminar we do every year where we bring people to it and that, that, that really works out. It, does, it gets through the money by the time we book everyone's flights and hotels for a week and conference fees, you know, that does burn through. Uh, and we looked at different ways of doing that. Uh, it, there's some boring admin stuff in this in that it's really difficult for the OU to pay people money um, to just kind of give a, a one-off payment. So the things we can't do are just say, we will pay you to go to a conference on our behalf. The OU doesn't like that, so they'd rather we book everything. So, um, and we looked at the models of doing that, but I th so I think we wanted to keep the seminar as it is, but other models of engagement that people might think would be useful or things we could do usefully with that mini seminar, if it could, you know, if it's sort of a different flavor. Um, any suggestions for future webinars? So we booked up to July, but then we've got the second half of the year. Um, and if people had thoughts on, um, so our current plan is to align with OE Global, but it's not a, not, signed into a contract or anything you know, they're very helpful they like having us there our experiences our students have found it very useful um, to go go to that conference um, and i think it has a good kind of global reach but if people had thoughts around um, opinions on that I'd, I'd welcome so i'm gonna stop if anyone wants to speak i'll try to give you a microphone uh, and you can speak or if not in the in the chat also i don't know if rob or paco want to come in here and say i think before we move on to the uh, research reports Oh, Leo's here. Hi, Leo. We'll let you off, Leo. Hi, uh, it's Rob. Um, Hi, Rob. I was just going to say, um, you know, we had a lot of discussions around um, OE Global and whether we should persist with our kind of main focus on OE Global as a as a conference. Um, and I was open to persuasion because I can definitely see the the value of reaching outside of our kind of typical community, if you like, um, and re you know finding people who are outside our orbit completely at conferences we wouldn't, we wouldn't normally go to and, and that kind of thing. Um, but having been to you know, OB Global this year, um, last year, I should say, and I sort of discussed it with a few people there, a few members and a few people from the organizing committee and stuff like that. Uh, and my view now is that it is the best conference for us to be aligned with on a kind of ongoing basis. But um, that doesn't mean that we can't kind of um, go to other places too. So I think that's, that's where the mini seminar comes in, where we can kind of, you know, just attach it to events that kind of look interesting or we think there might be a, an angle there or that kind of thing uh, and gives us that bit of flexibility as well. So we're not just kind of getting a bit sort of um, monotonous in our focus and just having, you know, one kind of um, trajectory. Um, I also think that the, the feedback that I've had from um, doctoral candidates in the network is that they really value going to OE Global particularly. Um, so I think, yeah, I think keep it keep it as it is, but the, the mini seminar gives us a bit of a flexible option as well. Yeah, yeah thanks, Rob. I'd say we did consider lots of other options. Um, so sometimes you end up at the same place, but it's not, as Rob says, it's not through laziness. It's kind of like through going around lots of other options. Uh, so Ada asks, are we planning any remote participation for the mini seminar? Um, we hadn't really decided that. I think... That's a good point. Um, so at the moment, the way we've structured it, and we were, we were partly we hadn't decided it because um, 
we were thinking about we weren't sure how many people would come um and we've only got limited places i think we've got about 17 places of which we are four or four um so i think one thing we might do is so at the moment we've kind of planned the morning to be a bit like the traditional um gojian seminar where people present about the research um and in the afternoon um a section around methods and um uh what's the last bit another section at the end sorry i forget uh, so we could kind of open up some or all of those um and so one thing we might do is um yeah uh, so just to mention this is separate from oer 20 so it's kind of like the day before um we could certainly ask people if they, if they don't mind being streamed and we could sort of do a light version whether that's you know through um periscope or something uh, just to say about the conference itself um uh, Leo's quite right. So um, if you go to the alt.ac.uk uh, website, um, they stream a lot of the talks. So they'll stream all of the keynotes live usually and all the other talks that are in that that room. So quite a lot of it is streamed. And they'll also be um, uh, virtually connecting, I guess, will come from there and we'll run a webinar from there as well. So you can get some uh, vicarious participation through that. Uh, but I think it's a good point. So I think thanks for raising that, Ada. And I think we need to make a, a decision on that and a plan to do it. But I think we could do a we can do a lightweight version, even if it's Periscope or something. Cool. Um, shall I move on? I shall move on. Good. Thank you, everyone. Um, so one of the things we agreed to do was to write um, a number of reports coming out of the GoGen network, uh, which aren't just written by us, but are kind of co-produced with uh, the members. Because one of the, I think one of the things now, we, when we first took the project on uh, four or five years ago, it was quite sort of you know nascent and, and just growing really. But I think it's kind of reached a, a level now where there's a lot of really good members and it's kind of sustainable. Uh, for those of you who are at OER 19 last year in Galway, I think I counted about 30 different presentations from GoGen members. At the conference, there was a kind of really strong presence. So I think one of the things you want to do is try and leverage that, that really good network um, to try and produce outputs that are of use for future members, but also for the, uh, the, the network, the OER community more widely. Um, and often people say to us, you know, they would quite like to know how they can contribute, how they can help with um, and give something back to the network. So our plan is to write three kind of co-produced reports, one each year. Um, so the first this year is going to be around research methods. So, so it would be like an open guide to OER research. So here are a set of research methods that people have used in OER research, and this is why they've used them. Uh, similarly, in 2021, one around conceptual methods, uh, and lastly in 2022, um, uh, of, of quite a comprehensive, I think it will be kind of bibliography reference list of all the things that people have um, brought together. Those things, and as I mentioned, we're also going to do our own um, research synthesis, which will pull on um, things we we read within the network itself, uh, and also our own reading, and produce one of those per year. And of course, they'll all be uh, open access license or CC BY license for people to take and use. Um, so I just before we gets those I uh, thought we'll just talk about um, some of the stuff kind of currently so um, I could perhaps give this session over to Katie if Katie wants to talk to it but so Katie did a survey for us uh, last year um, uh, of the GoGM members and had 38 responses uh, for over 14 different countries um, so you know like all surveys you tend to get the kind of more active people but I think it's probably not a bad um, representation of where of where our spread is at you know so there's probably most people also canada uk uh, usa are, are probably the most uh, prominent but there is a good kind of spread across across the globe um and we asked people kind of under broadly which which area they were researching in. i should say um i'll, I'll perhaps come back to this. so um, MOOCs, smallest, um, OER is, is, the, is the largest category, ODL is open distance learning and then open educational practice. This is um, 
an interesting area for us. So we get like um, different applications for people to join GoGen. We don't just always say yes. Sometimes we say no to people. So when it was South, it was very much around OER specifically. And, our, and the feedback from Hewlett was they wanted to kind of, sort of uh, keep it that way, retain that focus that, that it was it wasn't diluted so although we do have some MOOC research in there for instance they, they didn't want it to be a kind of completely a MOOC um, community um, but I think we've seen a shift to more um, open educational practice over the past few years and interestingly I think that aligns with where um, Hewlett's interest in OER is going also but because OEP is less well defined than OER that does make some of our decisions more difficult I think and um, is is use of social media OEP and so, so sometimes it's difficult to kind of see with the, the the open English. So I think it's this will be an interesting graph for us to kind of develop as as, as we go along. So, but th those are the kind of roughly the, the areas. And I think there is something about making sure that you do retain that focus. I mean that there, there are commonalities between all people doing PhDs, but a lot of the time the, the value people get from GoGen was as I mentioned that often they're the only people who are interested in their in in their institution sometimes country you know so um um so c coming together and finding people of, of common interest is actually the, you know the, the real value they get um so this is probably the most interesting slide thank you katie um of the different methodologies we ask people what methodologies they used um and there's often uh, a crossover between these so actually people use mixed methods a lot so they wouldn't just be one of these um, but I think what it shows is there's a lot of methodologies, which I think is a really great thing. And I think it's one of the kind of richnesses of our of our network. Um, there's probably uh, more of a slant towards uh, qualitative methods, which is interesting. Um, if you compare it with um, those of you know John Hilton's uh, open program, um, that tends to be much more quantitative. So I think it's quite a nice kind of complementarity between the two of those. So we have things from case studies. It's slightly the most popular uh, interviews um, surveys so those kind of things but often those will then be allied with uh, an, another thing I'm going to see Katie do you want to say anything to this you did kind of did analysis but feel free to say no I am putting you on the spot you're at work so you can't speak is that what you mean okay fine that's okay good uh, so I just want to sort of point out the um, the different methods there. And so this is kind of what we would like to build upon in the in the next in the report really. So having these explained in more detail, and particularly why they were chosen and how they were used to investigate OER. Um, similarly, we looked at um, conceptual framework. So this would be the grounding for the for next year's report. Um, and again, a lot of frameworks, <laughs> which I think again is brilliant. You know, it's like so um, you could come. So I think this would be a really useful thing if you were just starting out in this area. You come and say, "I want to do a." I mean, even if you are not doing um, OER research, to be honest, but I think you know, if you come, I want to look at this. So I, here's some methodologies that looks like the one I want to use, and here's a really good uh, conceptual framework that I could apply to it. So, um, so you're sorted then. You can do a pick and mix <laughs> from it. Um, so in terms of producing the report uh, what we want you to do um, is to go to that link uh, there and fill in uh, the survey now each of these sort of asks for up to 500 words I'm hoping that that isn't actually a lot of effort for those of you who are writing your PhDs or have written them because it's um, probably stuff you can pretty much cut and paste from what you've got you know we're not going to be too fussy pairs. so you, you you've probably done a lot of this in your introduction part and uh, methodology section so you can just kind of so what we're asking people today is just summarize your research and what is it you're looking at pretty quickly what your research questions were and i know <laughs> having supervised some of you in this group i know how often <laughs> how much people agonize over those research questions so it's your chance to use them once again um so how you arrived at the methods using your research um so i think that's often quite um interesting <laughs> yes leah that was kind of not you uh but um because often people you know 
you get the end point you know i chose to do this but we don't get the story about i didn't use these ones because actually when i started to use them i realized they weren't um, applicable so what do you see the advantages why it was used you know what's the potential disadvantages um and any advice you give to someone who's considering using it um and any and, you know just a couple of citations to go with that um, those references so i think if we can get that kind of input and it does depend on us um getting it um I mean, we can do some of the work i think by looking at what's out there but really we need input from others but i think if we get that you can see how that would really build up quite a nice rich picture um and then i think we could go through then and sort of top and tail it and you know format it and bring it together but i think it really needs to be a kind of co-produced uh, effort um oh did i mean to say that there uh, yeah i should say if you do complete the survey we'll send you a, a goji and penguin i mean i know there's lots of ethical issues about offering bribes to people to complete surveys and and it's not really done but i don't think uh it's um <laughs> it's applicable when it comes to penguins so um yes we're going to close the research method survey in looks at rob i th did we say may for that or end of april was it right i'm gonna ask rob so uh we wanted to have the uh the data in by sort of end of march okay so that we have some stuff to discuss in the, in the workshop for oer 20 but that doesn't mean the survey has to close then yeah. so we may you know just keep pushing it a few times till we've got you know a kind of critical mass i suppose cool yeah and we want the report out by sort of uh, end of may june time yeah so you know also we need to close it down and, and do things with it and format it and um get it out um yeah, so I, I don't, do you want to add anything more to this part, Rob? Um, just uh, to say, um, as, as you sort of mentioned, Martin, methods and methodology is, are definitely kind of areas of concern for most students. And I think um, it's, the one, it's one thing that people in GoGen are always asking about when we have the, the annual workshop. Um, so I think this is, this is a really kind of useful, um, it's partly a useful thing a practical thing for everyone to have this guide but also it helps us to understand what it, what is happening inside a kind of open community what kind of things are popular how does it compare with other things maybe it can tell us you know something about um, openness as a concern as well so i think that's quite an interesting angle to it and the way i sort of envisage the final um, report would be some combination of, of kind of practical stuff and as you say that those kind of personal stories where someone can say, you know, I, I was looking at this and I also considered these things, but they didn't really work. And almost having little panels, you know, like case studies within the report, so this is how it was been applied and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, I just hope that we get um, sufficient responses because um, the more responses we get, the better it will be. And the, the more it will show us if there's any pattern in what people are using and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, I'm quite excited um, about to see what we get back. Yeah, and I think just to stress, you know, um, everyone who contributes will be listed as a, a co-author on that, um, as a contributor on that report, and so it's going to be openly published and licensed. So, um, you know, so it's, it's a good way to kind of just uh, make a bit more use of your work as well and, and get a bit more attention to it. And I think you know, for those of you who've um, who are further on in your studies, it's nice to think that think about how useful this would have been when you were starting so now, now's your chance to pay it forward as it were if, if you're later on the study um or you know if you've been through some a lot of that discussion and i think one of the things you might like to do though is when we run f uh, future seminars you know take along copies of these reports to give out to people and perhaps frame some of the work around that um but i think um as rob says there's a kind of sort of a meta angle about this as well and it'd be quite interesting to kind of reflect upon the open uh community as well a research community and what those what those research methods perhaps tell you what I, my dream is that in about two or three years time someone's doing a phd about our reports <laughs> so, so that's kind of meta uh, go gn research report cool um yeah i mean i think i mean jennifer whatever you've got put in there 
I mean, if, but if you don't feel comfortable enough, sure. But I, I think you know we'd we welcome everything at the moment, and I'm sure you've done more thinking on it than uh, than you you, you probably land some credit for. Uh, yeah, so so we'll send you a penguin if you're good. Uh, so just and slightly related to that, so um, I mentioned the uh, seminar. Uh, so we're going to run an afternoon session on methods. So um, I don't know if I want to say what he's got planned for that. That's Tuesday, 30th of March. And maybe we can live stream this um, for people to join in remotely. Um, I think there was one one space left for the physical thing if you're there. So you grab your ticket. I don't know if you want to um, say anything, Rob, on this or pack on. Uh, I would only say that um, it will be very exciting. <laughs> it will be very exciting. <laughs> and, and there's free food before it. <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and that's really the end of it for me. So I, I, we just wanted to kind of let you know what we're planning and to get your feedback on it. So um, I'll open it up now for any comments. So if people think there's, you know, what would be useful um in terms of structure or in terms of any analysis we might do to it um that you know we we put that survey out there now in terms of how people input but um you know, if you've got any thoughts on on how that's structured particularly for future uh, reports coming up so i'll open it up i don't do you want to add anything there rob or packer and what would be useful feedback Uh, one thing we haven't um, worked out yet, I suppose, is what the process for reviewing it might be. Um, so once we've got a draft, I mean, obviously we'll show it to the people who've submitted something. To you know, if we if we're using some of their copy, um, but maybe we might also need reviewers, so people who aren't contributing stuff can still you know give us feedback. Maybe yeah, be useful, yeah. first draft by the time of the um, workshop then we can spend another month or whatever reviewing it collectively and we might pick up a few things that we've missed it's good to see people connecting over phenomenology <laughs> <laughs> actually people connected over that at one of our seminars obviously <laughs> when phenomenologists meet they uh, form a bond that's good to see. Uh, daniel asked a good point you know about um whether we should have we got our repository for completed theses we ask people to list on their member site but it's not easy and i wonder whether we could do something around that actually once you finish to send us it if it's if you're allowed to um and we can just uh <laughs> we can just create one there and also that would be useful for us to kind of do as a um as an ongoing um resource for us to analyze as well So Cathy says, I think the what didn't work and why would be helpful, whether part of the report or not. And can we share other stories? And was, yeah, so yeah, something that's right. So it's adding a bit of the um adding a bit of the human element to it as well. So it's not just, you know and that, that's often the stuff you don't get to put in your thesis, isn't it? Because you're trying to present this <laughs> neat story to people and not like the I spent three weeks crying when this didn't work. Yes, I think you're right, Terry. We we've um if Paco could speak, uh he could maybe talk about some of the work he's been thinking about with the, the members directory. But there's certainly more we want to do with that. So I want to encourage you all to submit to that if you feel comfortable doing so as we're all um always preaching open practice as well so now it's time to you know what's the phrase eat your own dog food as it were well, that's not, <laughs> never a particularly pleasant phrase um so i think that's it for now does anyone have any other comments so thank you for coming in and um I we just want to sort of start this process rolling as part of that and uh, we'll be pushing it out a bit more as well 
via social media channels. But if you've got any um, input, then you know either let us know via Twitter or ping us an email. Um, we're always happy to respond on that. Rob, do you want to round anything off? Um, I guess uh, just to say, if anyone has any thoughts later on this, um, when they're in the shower or whatever, um, just drop us a line. Because um, really the point of this, you know, these reports and stuff is to be useful and to respond to what members actually need. So, um, so yeah, don't don't be shy if you have an idea for what could go in it, or even if it goes into a future report or something. Um, one kind of idea that we have is that um, once you have these different reports, plus the kind of um, reviews of what's been happening in, in each year in the research, you could basically combine them all Voltron style into like a, a, a larger report. Um, and that would be, if you like, the handbook for um, anyone starting a, a, a PhD or an ED in this area in a couple of yeah. years. So there's really a chance to kind of influence and support um, the next generation coming up through this, which I think is is awesome. Yeah, so you know, if you want to get your favourite methodology in there, you've got to contribute really if you want to sway those future people. Come up, so it would be the, uh, the the one report to bind them all. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone for coming in. I'm just going to.